Okay, let's continue on um, with our chapter on electron configurations, and let's go a little bit further and look at how to do orbital notation or orbital diagram. So let's just practice doing out the electron configuration for phosphorus. So again, I'm going to have sets of numbers. You're going to have like 1s2, um, the 1 would be the energy level, the s would be the energy, um, the sublevel, and the exponent would be how many electrons are in there. Uh, when we're using the periodic table, we're going to get the number in front from the row that we're in. We're going to get the exponent from, or the, we're going to get the letter from what section we're in, and we're going to get the exponent from how many boxes we hit. Um, we can abbreviate with the noble gas, and let's do that for phosphorus just to practice. So for phosphorus, we pick the noble gas in the row above it, so we can abbreviate with neon. So we put NE in brackets. And then that means we can start after neon, so we can start in the row that phosphorus is in. So we're in row 3, um, starting over here. We're in row 3. We're in the S subshell, so we put an S, and we hit two boxes, one, two, in that color. So we put an exponent of 2. Moving across, we hit a new color, so we start a new set. We're still in row 3. We are in the P subshell, and we hit one, two, three boxes along the way. So I can also elaborate on this and do what's called orbital notation. Um, and I can do this with my abbreviated electron configuration. And when I do this, I'm going to take each set that I write um, and give it boxes according to what subshell I'm in. So anytime I hit an S, I'm going to draw one box because S can hold one orbital. Anytime I hit a P, I'm going to draw three boxes. Anytime I hit a D, I'm going to draw five boxes. And if I were hit an F, I would draw seven boxes. These correspond to how many orbitals S, P, D, um, and F hold. It doesn't matter what number is in front. When I'm trying to figure out how many boxes to draw, I'm only looking at the letter when trying to determine that. So let's draw the orbital notation for phosphorus. So I'm going to do that in green for phosphorus. So I'm going to rewrite NE in brackets, and I'm going to write the first part of the electron configuration, 3s2, and leave my space, myself some space on top or on bottom to show these boxes. So I notice that I have an S, so I'm going to draw one box. The exponent is going to tell me how many arrows or how many electrons to draw. So the fact that I have an exponent here of 2 is telling me that I should draw two arrows. And the convention is to always draw one up and one down to represent opposite spins. Whenever we put two electrons into one orbital, we have to have opposite spins. So the second set that I have to write is 3P3. I notice I have a P, so I'm going to draw three boxes. Even if I don't end up filling all the boxes, anytime I hit a P, I draw three. Anytime I hit a D, I draw five, so on and so forth. I might just have some unfilled. The exponent of three tells me that I'm going to draw three arrows. The convention is to always put one in each box before any pairing takes place, because an electron always singly occupies an orbital before any pairing takes place, because pairing would increase the repulsions between electrons. So I'm going to put one, and then one, and then one, and I'm done. That equals three in my P subshell. So then that's the orbital notation for P. Let's say we were doing S instead. S has the configuration of 3P4, then I would start to double up my um, electrons, they would be paired, and I would pair it um, by putting the opposite spin or putting the arrow in the opposite direction. Um, if a question ever asks how many unpaired electrons you have, it's a good practice to draw the orbital notation and just notice how many single unpaired arrows you have. So for sulfur, I would have two unpaired electrons, one, two. Okay, for phosphorus, I had one in each box, I would have had three unpaired electrons. 